the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, 
Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, Come, eat of my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As I remarked, not for the first time last week, the most important question ever asked is the one Who is Jesus? Who do the people say that I am? The answer to that question is the one which St. Peter gave. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now today we have the second most important question. 
It's related to the first one, but it's different. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? It's a fair question. If an ordinary human being said that, there's a couple of possibilities, the first of which they could be speaking figuratively, or they could be crazy, or evil crazy. But we know the answer to the first question. So we know the answer to this question is not given about or from one who is only an ordinary human being, not a human being at all, but one who is true God and true man at the same time. Jesus is not merely human. As he says of himself in the scripture reading, he is the living bread come down from heaven. He is true God and true man. Now let's think a minute about God. What has God done? God has done a lot of things, but probably the most impressive thing that God did is he made everything. This universe, any other universe that there might be, if you're into the whole multiverse thing, he made it all out of nothing. He didn't put together a model kit. He made it all out of nothing. And he keeps it in existence. So that if God ever stopped loving any part of, its creation, of his creation, it would simply disappear. There wouldn't be even be a smudge on the ground. Well, if God can do that, if God can create everything with a pure act of love and keep it in existence, really it is a relatively small thing to change wheat bread and grape wine into the body and blood, soul, and divinity of his son. It's a relatively small thing for the power of God, but it is a very, very, very big thing for us. For it is only by it being truly the body and blood of Christ that we can share in his sacrifice. If you read the Old Testament, if you read the Law of Moses concerning sacrifices, the only way to share in the sacrifice was by eating a portion of the animal or the, the grain or whatever that was sacrificed. The people shared in the, the Passover sacrifice by eating of the roasted lamb. And in that way, the sacrifice was made present to them and it had an effect in their lives and they shared in it. When we share in the sacrifice of our Lord upon the cross, we are saved. Our sins are taken away. The hold of the world, the flesh, and the devil and death itself over us is broken and we have the promise of eternal life. And every time we receive Holy Communion worthily, we share in that sacrifice. It is only if it is true food and true drink that we enter into Jesus and Jesus enters into us that we have communion with him. And through having communion with him, we have access to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, and to the communion of saints. The manna that the Israelites had in the desert was a wonderful thing. It kept them alive for 40 years as they were wandering in the desert. 
The Holy Eucharist is far and away better than manna. Those who ate manna nonetheless die. But those who eat of the flesh and the, of the Son of Man and drink of his blood worthily will never die, but will be raised up into everlasting life on the last day. They will live forever. One of the things I love about our cathedral is the the quotes from sacred scripture that are that are on the wall. You know, by Saint Paul, it's though we or an angel from heaven preach a gospel to you besides that it has been preached to you, let him be anathema. You don't have to be a a, a brain surgeon to figure that one out. Uh, why it's up there and who it's directed to. But if you look into what is now the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, what used to be the sanctuary, on the left-hand side as you're looking up, you'll see a, a quote from our own Gospel reading today. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. The Catholic belief of the Eucharist boldly proclaimed to the world. It is not something that we should ever be ashamed of, though it scandalizes certain other people. When I was a small child, I would spend a month every summer down in Cedar City with my father's parents. And my best friends down there were the boys who lived next door. There were three of them, they were older than me, but we, we played a lot and we had a lot of fun. They're great kids. But they were very LDS. And they found out I had Catholic relatives, my cousins. If you came to my mom's funeral, you would have met them. They were Catholic. They found out I had Catholic relatives, and their response was, you do know that they're cannibals. You want to get the attention of a seven-year-old, tell him his relatives are can cannibals. Now, I knew when I went over to the house that we had never had people. No people kebabs, ever. So what, what does that mean? Well, Catholics believe that they, they really eat the flesh of Jesus and drink of his blood, and that is true. We do believe that. I think they were thinking how weird it was. What I was thinking in my brain was, wow, that's cool. It is cool. Because by eating his flesh and drinking his blood, we fulfill the command of the Lord Jesus. And that command is given to us so that we might have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who hath spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in prayer for the needs of the Church and the world. For our Holy Father Pope Francis and our Bishop Oscar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and Russia, the Middle East, and throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders will govern in accord with the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fallen away and apostate Catholics will return to Christ's church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to the religious life, diaconate, and priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and the safety of our military forces and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those most in need of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as God's people look forward to the resurrection on the last day, they may bring a new respect for innocent human life into our laws and policies today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intention that we add in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, and with kindness upon these prayers which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of the deceased members of the Hawkerl family. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from men in death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being. And paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things who may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, he, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest to Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through this sac these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most 